Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. So, I thought I'd do a little introduction video, a little Q&A for you to get to know me a little better. Hopefully you've enjoyed the performances I've uploaded prior to today. So this is going to be the first installment of my Mimosa with Mimiosa series. Uh, each week I'll kind of do a different kind of topic, get a little drunk with a little bit of champagne and orange juice, and um, yeah, it's going to be a great time. I guess we'll start with my Q&A. So my first question is, when did you start doing drag? So I started doing drag um, about a year and a half ago. I live in a little town in Ontario, Canada called Kingston. So there's not a huge drag scene here, but you know, we're making it work. So how did I get into drag? Well, I actually went to see a drag show within Kingston and there there was a drag queen performing and she was performing Vanity by Christina Aguilera, one of my favorite songs. So of course I knew all the words, so I was sitting there in the audience, lip syncing my little gay ass off. And she actually invited me up on stage to kind of do the song with her. Obviously I was just a boy, but I did the song and you know, everybody loved it. The organizer of the show was like, oh, have you ever thought about doing drag? So I kind of started, you know, dabbling into it, uh, looking, looking up makeup tutorials, that kind of thing, trying to dip my feet in the water. And she just kind of told me, you know, whenever you're ready, come out and you can do a show. So, you know, booked my first gig before I even had a drag name. So anyways, I was actually a pride queen, so there was a pride boat cruise going on. Um, I went out for my first time in drag, and the scene was so welcoming. It was so nice to kind of, you know, put yourself out there um, as a new queen and like just be loved and accepted by everyone in the community. So yeah, that's how I started to do drag. They say everybody's either a Halloween queen or a pride queen, so I was a pride queen. Got a little too drunk, threw up all night, and was six hours late to work. So how did I get my drag name? It's actually a funny story. In grade 12, me and my friend were kind of fucking around one night and we were like, oh, why don't we put you into drag? And by drag, we mean no wig, no nails, nothing's changed. And just used my sister's makeup and like threw on a bodycon dress and called it a day. But we were, we were drinking mimosas and I'm actually a huge fan of Mariah Carey and her nickname is Mimi. So I thought, well, Mimi's a great name just because, you know, tells everybody that I suck dick. And then we were drinking mimosa, so I was like, wait, what about Mimi Osa? And then when I started doing drag a couple of years later, it just naturally came to me and I was like, you know what, let's just stick with that name because I love it so much and it's so representative of who I am. So the next question is describe your drag style. Uh, I kind of hesitate to describe my own drag style just because I don't like to put myself in a box. You know, like I can wear a PVC leather kimono one day and then get up in a gown the next day and you know, I, I don't stick to one genre of music, I don't, I don't stick to one uh, kind of look, so I don't really like to describe my drag style. That being said, I do tend to gravitate towards uh, wearing nice gowns and you know, having the whole finger wave hair that all the drag queens love to wear nowadays. Yeah, I like to perform songs that have a lot of riffs. I can show off my lip syncing ability. She's not a dancer. Uh, yeah. So what are your main influences in drag? Well, my main influences in drag have to say Angelica Houston, Mariah Carey. I'm really inspired by uh, people like Willem and Bianca Del Rio who have changed the drag scene, but I don't necessarily take any of my drag style from them. James Mansfield is someone I identify with a lot. I think we kind of have the same style, bad makeup. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't really have drag influences. I just kind of do what I do what I want to do. What's my least favorite part of drag? My least favorite part of drag is nails. I don't like putting them on. I don't usually put them on unless I'm doing a paid gig, just because it's such a hassle. They're quite expensive and I lose like six by the end of the night. So like, what's the point? Let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum and talk about my favorite part. My favorite part of drag is definitely performing. When I was little, I always liked to lip sync. I would just lip sync around the house in the kitchen. So that's definitely my favorite part. And I think it's uh, what's most enriching about drag for me is that, you know, I get to perform and I get to put myself out there, be on the stage and, you know, hear the applause. It sounds conceited, but aren't we all? Okay, the next one is how often do I do drag? 
So because Kingston's such a small city, we only have kind of one drag group and we only do shows once a month. Lately I've been getting a little more uh, free fundraising gigs, events like there was a slow dance that played a bunch of uh, indie kind of dance music and I performed a 15 minute set there. We actually just did a fundraiser for a social justice committee and we had that in an on-campus club and that did really well. So lately I've been getting a little bit more gigs, but usually just once a month. My top five drag queens in no particular order. Willem, Bianca Del Rio. Oh, this is hard. Violet Tchotchke, Aquaria, and... Oh, bitch, this is hard. Um... Oh, Ava Destruction. Okay, my favorite drag race season is season six. Everybody on that season was so talented. There could be an all-star season with every single one of them. Yes, even Magnolia Crawford. And Bianca's the best winner of all time, so. All right, these next two questions come from loving and adoring fans, Jen Healy and Fenny B. Fab. What's it like living with pubic crabs? I wouldn't know. Ask your father. What that mouth do? Suck a lot of dick in back alleys for five dollars. Favorite alcoholic drink? Mimosas. Where do I get my wigs? I get this question a lot because I do have nice wigs. This one is from Clutching at Curls, which is an Australian-based uh, wig company. I get some of my wigs from Webster Wigs, uh, which is a UK-based uh, wig styling company. And I have some from Wigs by Vanity. I have some from Wigs and Grace. A lot of my earlier wigs came from like Amazon or uh, Wig is Fashion. Now that I've gone with more of the styled look, it's all from Clutching at Curls and Webster Wigs. Okay, my favorite number to perform. This is kind of a newer one, but um, it's definitely become one of my signature and key numbers. So it's actually two, I think. Good Thing by Jojo and Show Me Love by Robin S. What's my favorite outfit? My favorite outfit is actually a tie between, I have a B Cala dress, it's the scrap dress. Hannah Holquist wore it. It's just a bunch of uh, scraps from his previous works tied to like a blue mesh tube dress and it's really cute, I really like it. It's super fucking heavy though. My other is a Catherine Delish dressing gown. It's those ones that you see on Tumblr where it's like, you know, if the police come to my house after my husband husband suffers a mysterious death, this is what I'm going to be wearing. That's what I have. And the authentic one, not these knockoff ones the drag queens are buying nowadays. It's the real one made by Catherine Delish. It's in a nice lilac color. I like watch Grey's Anatomy sitting on the bed, like, just lounging in it. Okay, so the next question is, favorite makeup item and my favorite makeup brand? My favorite brand, I think, I think is Jeffree Star. Little controversial, but us drag queens, you know, we love Jeffree. His makeup, not him. No, no, no bitch, not him. And uh, my favorite uh, makeup item, Hoochie from OCC. Little makeup guru moment. I think they discontinued it, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Okay. Describe my getting ready process. So usually what I'll do is I will shower, remove all of my body hair that needs to be removed, and then I will shave. I sit down, I put on my music. Sometimes I'll listen to, you know, pop music. Sometimes I'll listen to something relaxing. Just kind of depends on what the show is and what my mood is. Yeah, I do my makeup. It takes me about maybe two hours to do makeup and then another hour, hour and a half to get all the get all the things on. Yeah, and I like to just like pour a glass of wine and, you know, pre-drink before the show. So the next question is, are there any misconceptions about drag that I want to clear up? So I think the big one is that drag and being a trans woman are synonymous when they are definitely not. The thing with drag is that we can take it off at the end of the day, we can be in, in full drag and then come home and take everything off. We don't actually, you know, suffer the same public scrutiny that trans women face. They have to go through their lives and if they're wanting to pass, they have to hope that they can pass in public and not be, you know, called out or clocked as a trans woman. Whereas, you know, I can walk out my front door now without all of this on and, you know, face no 
face no harassment at all. So it's not the same for trans women. And the other thing is that that is a gender identity, whereas you know, I am a cis male and I identify as a male and do drag for a hobby. It's it's an art form. So yeah, that's the main difference is that, you know, this is not something that's a part of a gender identity. It's something that's, you know, that we do for fun or we do for our art or we do for money. Yeah. Okay. Last question. Oh no. Why do I do drag? I do drag for the attention? No. I do drag for a couple of reasons. One, I really enjoy doing it. I've kind of had a struggle in finding something that I like to do and something that I can stick to doing. And drag seems to be something that I haven't gotten bored of yet and I love doing it. So hopefully that, hopefully that, you know, keeps and I can do this for a long time. I also do it just because it's a way to express myself. I always felt like I, you know, I had a more feminine side, but I don't feel uncomfortable in my male body. And drag is kind of a way to kind of explore the more feminine side of myself. Yeah, in a fun and exciting way. And the third reason is money. Okay, well thank you everybody for checking out my first Mimosa with Mimiosa video. I'm hoping to post a new Mimosa with Mimiosa every other Sunday. So if you have any ideas for what I should be talking about or themes for the episode, feel free to comment or shoot me a message on Facebook or something. I'll link all of my social media below. I'm super excited to embark on this journey with you and, you know, get to know you a little better and hope you get to know me. There's always time for a mimosa. Oh shit, that's not my tagline. I can't use that. Okay. How about, how about... Always freshly squeezed. Mimiosa. No, that sounds stupid. Um... Help me come up with a tagline. Help. Bye.